Yesterday, we were hearing from the first chapter of Sri Bhajan Rahasya. And we heard in, in the afternoon about 
about the structure of Bhajan Rahasya and how that is related to the structure of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the structure of Shikshastaka, the eight verses that were taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to eight stages in the development of Prem. And for those who have attained the state of Bhav to the Astakali Lila of Radha and Krishna. Don't try to artificially remember Astakali Lila. You cannot do it. It is not possible. It is not possible to conceive of something you have not experienced. The mind can only reproduce its own samskars. So when you try to imagine something, then you will just uh, uh, disturb the mind with more vikalpa. That is, vikalpa is one vritti of the mind, the manifestation of non-correlated thought constructs. In other words, putting together different samskars and memories to make something which has no counterpart in the real world material or spiritual. So, that vikalpa, that imagination, is caused by Rajagun, the mode of passion. So you cannot become uh, into a higher state of concentration, which requires a, the predominance of sattva, by dropping down into vikalpa, creative speculation, imagination, which is the product of Rajagun the mode of passion. <coughs> so, <coughs> the Leela of Radha and Krishna is Ananta, unlimited. And it is Swapakash, self-manifesting. It is Achintya, inconceivable, beyond the limitation of the mind and intelligence. Therefore, only by taking shelter of the Holy Name, gradually, is it revealed the form of Krishna, his qualities, his associates, and then his pastimes will manifest themselves. Something will uh, come in the stage of Asakti, the Abbas of your Swarup and your services, and then in the stage of Bhav, naturally. The pastimes of Krishna will manifest in a flow in your heart without any effort at all, by the power of Sri Krishna's the Swarup Shakti, internal potency. So, try to chant and remember, following each chapter of Bhajan Rahasya, and then when Bhav comes, then this Astakali Lila will manifest. So, we want to complete some of the main ideas Siddha Bhaktivinoda Thakur is presenting in the, in the first chapter. The first chapter is based on Chaito Darpana Marjanam, this verse, which describes the seven excellent results of chanting the Holy Name. So this verse and the first chapter corresponds to Sraddha, the development of faith. Because how do we develop faith? By hearing these seven excellent results of chanting, by hearing about the power of the Holy Name, the glories of the Holy Name, gradually our faith comes in Nam. Otherwise, if we don't have faith in Nam, then in the name of practicing Bhakti, we'll have faith in mental speculation. And we will think that we can create everything by our imagination. So first, deeply, deeply hear about the power of the Holy Name. Now, uh, let's see. In this first chapter, Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur is also presenting some important verses about the excellence of bhakti in general. 
So we come to verse 13 now. Yamadi bir yoga patai kama loba hatomahu makunda sevea yadvata datmanam nashamyati. This verse was spoken by Narad Rishi to Srila Vyasadev in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Yamadi bhi means in the practice of Ashtanga Yoga there is Yam, Niyam, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana and Dhyan, Samadhi. There are eight stages. So here Yamadi B means Yam, the restraints and the injunctions, Niyam and all the other stages in the Ashtanga Yoga system. So Yamadi B Yoga Apatai, Kama Loba Hatomahu. By practicing this, you can reduce the calm, lust, worldly desires, lobe, greed, anger, bewilderment, pride, envy, all the negative qualities that come from the destabilized, disordered mind, by practicing the Astanga Yoga system, you can suppress them to a certain extent, but you cannot fully remove them. So Mukunda Sevea Yadvat, unless and until one engages in the service of the lotus feet of Mukunda, Mukunda means Krishna, whose mukha, whose face is beautiful, shining like a kunda flower. Oh Mukunda, hmm? Mukti, Kukutsita, who makes Mukti liberation or oh, despicable? Hmm? If you see the beauty of Krishna, then you think Nirvana. <laughs> Don't want Nirvana, that's horrible. So his name is Mukunda. Oh, Mukunda means one uh, Mukti Kunda da, Dadati. He gives Mukti liberation. And he gives the Ananda which makes liberation seem the completely despicable. Mukunda means also he gives liberation to whom? Braj Gopis. By the sound of his flute, they become mad and they're liberated from doing their housework. <laughs> they're liberated from the imprisonment of their mother-in-law and family members. They become mad and they run to Krishna. So he's Mukunda. Their hair is also tied very tightly in a beautiful braid. And by the ecstasy of meeting with Krishna, their braid also becomes open. So here's Mukunda. And there's many, so many knees. Mukunda Seva Yadvat. Tadatma nam na shamyati. Na shamyati means you cannot um, suppress the oscillations of the mind completely until you serve Mukunda. Even if you are doing the Yamadivi, the by eight different practices of the Astanga Yoga system. So there are many there is so much evidence for this. <coughs> Even uh, Patanjali in his Yoga Sutras, he said Samadhi Siddhi Ishwari Ishwara Pranidanat. The perfection of Samadhi comes from surrendering to Ishwara, the Supreme Lord. Huh? You cannot attain perfection without Bhakti. Hmm? What is Ishwara Pranidhan? In the commentary, the Vyas Basya, by his disciple, there he said, Ishwara Pranidhan means Vishesh Bhakti, intense devotion. So, uh, even though there may be persons who practice the yoga system, but they don't practice Bhakti, they cannot attain perfection. When even the greatest of all the yogis, Patanjali, he said, you have to do bhakti, there's no, <laughs> there's no option. So, but throughout the uh, Shastra, many examples are there in history. Do you know Subhari Rishi? Subhari Rishi was so powerful, he was meditating underwater. He had completely stopped his uh, breathing by pranayama and he was in trance meditating with half closed eyes without blinking 
<laughs> and he was in trance. But then one day, two fish were swimming in front of his eyes. One boy and one goldfish. And they were kissing. And when he saw this, it reminded him of something. And oh, the bubbles came out and he came out from the water. He'd been meditating for hundreds of years on the water, so his body was very gross, like spinach. <laughs> and he went to the palace of a king, Mandata Maharaj, and said, I want to marry one of your daughters, a princess. So he had 50 daughters. And when all those princesses, they saw him, oh no, please, we don't want to marry this person. He looks disgusting. We want a very young and beautiful husband. And each princess was thinking, I hope my father doesn't arrange me. Arrange my marriage with him. So then Subari Rishi, by his mystic city's power, he made himself young and beautiful. Hmm? Then all the princesses, they were fighting with each other. Me, no, me. <laughs> so then in the end, it was decided, okay, Subari Rishi, he can marry all of them, all 50, and everyone was happy as far as illusory, temporary, material happiness goes. <laughs> After a long time of the illusory uh, pleasures of the senses, of the physical body, then Subari Rishi realized, oh, what have I done? I got completely distracted and bewildered and uh, deviated from my goal of life. And again, he left everything. But this is the Praman, that even persons who can meditate in trance, underwater, without breathing, it looks like they're free from all attachments, but still, deep down, there is some be some seed of desire and it will manifest. It cannot be that the seed will not go away. On the other hand, the gopis of Vrindavan, they just love Krishna in a very simple way. They just want to please. So one day, when they were bathing in the river at the end of their Vrat, Katya, of worshipping Katyani Devi, to attain Krishna as their, some wanted to attain Krishna as their husband, Pati, Katyani Mahamai Mahayogi Nadisri Nanda Gopam Sudam Devi Pati Me Kurte Namaha. And some of them, Nanda Gopam Sudam Devi Pati, they wanted to attain Krishna as their Devi Pati, play husband. Eh? That means a paramour. So, they were bathing in the river, naked. They put their clothes on the bank. And Sri Krishna came there secretly, quietly, and stole all their clothes and climbed up a tree. And then, he came with some little boys, very small, naked. And the little boys saw Krishna doing this, and they started to laugh. When the gopis in the river heard the laughter of the little boys, then they realized, oh, we're not alone. And they looked. And so all their clothes were gone. And then they looked up the tree and saw Krishna was so. They sank in the water up to their necks like this. Now they look like lotus flowers in the water. Very beautiful. And all at once manifest Kila Kinchit Bhav. Garabhapilasarudasmi Suyabayakudam. Oh, I'm going off the topic a little bit. Uh, but <laughs> seven ecstatic motions are mixed together on every face and Krishna was <sighs> drinking the nectar of the beauty of the Gila Kinji Bhav of all those gopis. He told them to come out of the water and he returned their clothing. At that time he said that I know why you are worshipping Katyani. Any desires which are directed towards me cannot produce bondage. You see? Just like 
a seed which has been, Krishna said, just like a seed which has been uh, fried. If you plant it in the ground, it will not grow. So the yogis, they can suppress all their desires, but some seed is still there, and given a particular circumstance, it will grow. But the devotees who direct all of their desires towards Krishna, they become like fried seeds, and they'll never be overpowered by worldly desires, because they direct all their desire towards Krishna. So, those who want mukti liberation, they're trying to uh, stop everything. Nirvana. No relationship. No activity. No love and affection. But the devotees say, no, we'll have a relationship, transcendental relationship. We'll have activity. Ecstatic loving service. We'll have affection for Krishna. So, it is not that the, the, these tendencies are suppressed, but because Krishna is made the aim of all of these tendencies, they become purified. So, the devotees and the yogis, they look at reality in a different way. Just like Sobhari Rishi is meditating underwater with half-closed eyes, not blinking. You can all try it. Try it. Just have close your eyes and don't blink. <laughs> and then what happens? You see everything starts to kind of fade into the background. Uh, and you go towards that nirvikalpa samadhi. Uh, so that is called nirnimesh darshan. Those who realize Brahman, they're looking at the truth. Uh, but with nirnimesh darshan, unblinking look at the truth. So they only see Brahman. And the devotees, they also look at the same truth. But how? Kataksh darshan. That means not like this, but like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sidelong glance, kataksh. <laughs> so these are two ways of looking at the truth. One brings you to the emptiness of Brahman. Nir nimesh darshan. No blinking darshan. <laughs> And devotees are looking at the same truth, Kataksha, with a loving glance. Another example is given in the Ramayana. There was a great sage named Vishwamitra Muni. And he was doing austerities, very hard austerities, and meditating on the bank of a sacred river. And then his austerities were so intense, he was accumulating so much uh, material piety by the strength of his austerities that Indra became afraid that, oh, this Rishi is becoming so powerful that perhaps he can take over my Swargalok and become the next Indra. And I'll lose my position. So then Indra was thinking, hmm, how can I stop him? Oh, Menaka. And he called one beautiful Apsara from heaven, named Menaka, and sent her on a mission. A go and distract that Rishi. <laughs> so then, Menaka came down to earth, and he was meditating, and this, he heard the sound. The tinkling of the ankle bells of the celestial maiden. Very sweet. And only hearing this from his near Nimesh Darshan, he opened his eyes. Uh, and then saw that that heavenly angel was uh, bathing in the river. And her cloth was very fine. And when it became wet, it became see through, transparent. And she was very young and beautiful and shining. And he was very attracted to her. And he said, Oh, dear Apsara, you are welcome to stay with me in my ashram. <laughs> and uh, we can enjoy together because the, in the Swargalok, on the heavenly planets, there's no rule of dharma against the sexual activities. 
there. That's why people they want to do yagyas and everything and go to Swargalok because there they can enjoy with all the apsaras and they don't make any bad karma. Only they burn their good karma and then they come back down to earth again. So he said, you are heavenly damsel, so for you there's no obstacle, so stay with me. And she stayed with him and for a long time they were enjoying. But after some time, then again Vishwamitra Rishi realized, oh, what have I done? <laughs> I was trying to follow my path of sadhana and I had become completely distracted. So he sent her back to heaven. But uh, Indra's mission was accomplished. Again he did austerities for a long time. Then Indra called another Apsara, hey, Ramba. <laughs> So when the history goes, you can read the Ramayana. <laughs> but these are illustrations of this important verse spoken by Narad Muni to Srila Vyasadeva, who has compiled all the Vedas, Gita, Mahabharata, Bhagavatam. Yama dibi yoga patai kama loba hatomahu makunda seva yadvat tadatmada na shamyati that by the Ashtanga Yoga system you can suppress desires for a certain time but they will manifest again only by Bhakti can you uh, have complete the Shamyati the complete peace of heart you see if Vishwamitra Muni was doing Harinam Sankirtan he wouldn't even be able to hear the sound of the ankle bells <laughs> Haribo, 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 Haribo. So the devotees who are absorbed in loud Harinam Sankirtan, their hearts become peaceful and they cannot be distracted by the sound of Menikas, Nupur, Uncle Bells, or anything else in this material world. Because in this Naam, Sri Krishna, Nam Nama Kari Bahudani Jasava Shaktis, all the Shaktis of Krishna, the Lalita, Vishaka, Chitra, Tapakalata, everyone, all Vrindavan is in this Naam. So devotees who experience that, they have no uh, attraction at all to the temporary judd, senseless, insentient material world. Now, Srila Bhakti Thakur is giving another verse, also from the Narad Vyasambhad of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, now text 14 of Bhajanasa. Nice karmyam apyachuta bhava vajitam na shopate gyanam alam niranjanam. Kuta puna shashwat abhatra mishre na chaptam kama yadapyakarnam. These are very important verses. This is not only in the first canto, the same verse is there in the twelfth uh, canto as well. So these verses are repeated in Srimad Bhagavatam because they're so important. Nice karmyam apyatuta bhava varjatam na shopate gyanam. The meaning here is that. Let us say, you attain Gyan. Gyan. That is, knowledge. Here, Gyan means the power of discrimination between matter and spirit. Hmm? Hmm? That is the hmm, Deha Atma Vivek. The discrimination between the body and the self. And this knowledge is nice karmia, completely free from any contamination of karma. That means that by the vidya vritti of sattva gun, the avidya vritti, that means by the knowledge action of sattva gun, the avidya vritti of raja gun has been completely destroyed. So then you become a Jivan Mukta, liberated while still alive, while still in this world, but liberated, because you have some uh, realization of the, of the Self. 
But this knowledge is not beautiful. If varjitam, if it is devoid of achuta bhav, bhav is the feeling of love towards achuta. Krishna's name is achuta. Achuta means one who never falls who never fails. He is infallible. That means he always saves his devotee. Or gopis will think he never fails to make problems in our life. <laughs> He's a chutta. <laughs> he gives us pain when we're in separation and when we meet him he also gives us pain. So he's a chutta. He never fails in that. So anyway, if you don't feel love for that achuta, then even if you get knowledge which is uh, free from the avidya vritti, so you become liberated, that knowledge is not beautiful. Why? Because if arura krishtina param padam tata by hard austerities you rise up to the platform and have some glimpse of the mm, liberation. But if you don't serve the lotus feet of Krishna, then it is unavoidable that you have such an idea that Krishna and his devotion is material. And therefore, you are committing some offense and by that offense even though you have come up to the platform of liberation hmm, due to the offense to Krishna's lotus feet still even being free from the avidya vritti but you will fall down again and come into Maya. So don't think that those persons are almost liberated uh, then their desires get activated again and they come down. No, even those who are liberated, this is another step. They have nice karmya. Their, their knowledge is liberated. It is niranjan, alam niranjanam. It's completely uh, un not covered at all by the, vid the avidya vritti. But even those jivan mukta liberated persons, they have no contamination. But by the inconceivable potency of the Lord, due to making an offense to his divine form, they also fall down. So, alam niranjanam. Alam means enough. Enough with being purified. <laughs> What's the use of this purification? If uh, the person does not have the loving emotion towards Krishna. So, kutapuna shashwada badram nachapitam karma yadapikarnam. So, what more can we say is there's no beauty in performing karma. If you're doing prescribed duties in this world of Varnashram Dharma. So, Kuta Apuna Shashwat Abhadram Ishwari means that Shashwat means all the time and Abhadram means inauspicious. All these worldly duties are inauspicious. Ishwari Na Charpitam Karma if they are not offered to Krishna. So let's say a person is within the Varnashram Dharma system doing their duties in life. Those duties are always troublesome and inauspicious. If they don't at the end of the day say, Oh my Lord, I offer all my activities to you. Yadapya <coughs> Karanam. And even if the person is doing some prescribed duties, Apyakarana means without desire for the results. That's called Nishkarma Karma Yoga. You are working in the world, but you don't want any result from this. So, um, Kuta Puna Shashwat. Even this, this is uh, the idea expressed here is that if Gyan, which is pure, which is the result of the Nishkarma Karma Yoga, is not beautiful, then what can we say about the Nishkarma Karma Yoga is even less beautiful than what can we say about the performance of the uh, the karmas with attachment to the results like this. So here in this verse, 
karma, nishkarm karma, and gyan, they have all been um, condemned. If that person has no bhakti in his life, then Sila Bhakti Nautaku, text 15, is quoting a prayer of Lord Brahma. Sriyasatim bhakti mudasite bibo klesyantiye kevala boda labdeye kleshamat so klesha eva shishate nanyat yatas dula to savagati nam. Lord Brahma, pray to Krishna. Oh my Lord, those persons who uh, give up the only path of auspiciousness, Sriyasritim, Bhakti. Bhakti is the only path of auspiciousness for the soul. But leaving Bhakti, Krishyanti Yekevala Bodha Labdaye, they want to attain liberation, impersonal liberation, Nirvana. But they only experience Krishyanti, suffering. Their, all their activities, they're like stula to savagatinam. That means trying to uh, thresh the uh, rice paddy, the husk of rice paddy. When you have rice paddy, you beat it and the rice comes out from the husk. But if someone gives you a, a pile of husk, if you beat it, what do you get? <laughs> nothing, only sweat. <laughs> you work hard and your result is nothing. So Lord Brahma is saying this, that those who neglect the path of bhakti to follow other types of practices to attain liberation, they may work very hard. But the tragic thing is, in the end, they get nothing. No reward for their activity. All they get is their hard work. So now, We will not touch every verse, but some of the main ones. Text 18, from the Skanda Purana. Sila Bhakti Nautakur, having established negatively the glory of Bhakti by showing the uh, futility of other practices. Now he's coming back to the glories of the Holy Name. So in the Skanda Purana, Srila Vyasa Deva has written, Maduram, Maduram, Etan Mangalam Mangalana Sakama Nigama Bali Sat Palam Chit Swarupa Sakridapi Parigitam Swataya Hilayava Rigavara Naramatam Tarit Krishna Nama Maduram Maduram Etan Mangalana This name of Krishna is the sweetest of all sweet things. This sweetness is the main quality of Bhagavan. Hmm? No. The sweetness, not his power and inconceivable potency and knowledge and renunciation, but his sweetness is his main quality. Madhurya Bhagavata Sa Braje Koila Paracha Tashuka Vyasarananda Stane Stane Bhagavate Vaniyachi Chanaite Tahasuni Mate Bhaktagana Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said the essence of Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord, is Madhurya sweetness. This sweetness has been described by the son of Yasudev, Shukadev Goswami, in various places in Srimad Bhagavatam. And when the devotees hear it, they become intoxicated. They become mad. So, Madhurya sweetness means eh? Manuharita. The power to steal your mind. When a person experiences Krishna's sweetness, they forget everything else. They cannot remember, who am I? What was I doing? <laughs> All their duties and everything, they forget. So Krishna has Rupa Madhuri, the sweetness of His form. Vainu Madhuri, the sweetness of His flute singing. Prema Madhuri, the sweetness 
of the love of his associates. Krishna has associates which have such a love, no other form of the Supreme Lord is loved the way that Krishna is loved. And Leela Madhuri, the sweetness of his pastimes. So all of that sweetness is there in Krishna now. Mangalam Mangalanam It is the most auspicious of all auspicious things. So, in a person's life, they may have many inauspicious things going on. They may have bad planets. Here and there, influencing them. They come into bad association. They suffer so much. Many problems. Physical, mental, economic. But when a person chants the holy name, then their life becomes completely mangal, completely auspicious. Mangal, what is mangal? Only rati. Whatever moves us in the direction of love for Krishna is auspicious. So then, so-called worldly problems, they are no longer problems. They are only opportunities for us to express our love for Krishna. If a difficulty comes, but still you are serving, then Krishna feels indebted. Oh, he's always serving me, even during a, a problem. During a problem, so that was not a problem. That was just an opportunity to attract Krishna's heart. Yeah. So the holy name makes everything auspicious. Sakana sakala nigamavali satphalam chitsurupam. Nigama means the Vedas. The Vedas are like a wish-fulfilling vine. And on that vine there is a fruit. That is the holy name. If there is a wish-fulfilling vine, then you can go and from that wish-fulfilling vine you can ask for anything you want. And it will give anything you want. But, what we should understand here is the fruit on that wish-fulfilling vine is not the vine giving you what you want. It's giving the vine is giving you what the vine wants to give you. <laughs> it's completely different. Yeah? You see, so when someone goes to the Vedas, they can see, oh, where's the yagya to go to heaven? Where's the yagya to have uh, many children? Where's the yagya to uh, uh, find uh, the, what is the way to find a very good husband or wife or whatever? So, by practicing various sacrifices and rituals in the Vedas, you can fulfill desires. Because the Vedas are a desire tree, they will give you whatever you want. Liberation, whatever. Mystic powers. But the fruit of the Vedas is what the Vedas want to give you. So here, Sakama Nigavali Satphalam Jitsvarupam. The holy name is what the Vedas want to give you. And it's a fruit. And this fruit is Chitsurup, conscious. In other words, this name is com completely aware. It is more aware than us. Why? Because it's Krishna Himself. So don't think that the name of Krishna is Shabda Samanya. Shabda Samanya means ordinary sound. Achei Vishnu Shiladi Guru Shu Naramati Vaishnava Jati Bodhi. He said in scripture, if a person thinks that the deity is made of stone, or a Vaishnava belongs to a particular caste or race or gender, if a person thinks that a guru is an ordinary human being, or if a person thinks that the mantras of the holy names of Krishna or ordinary sound, then that person is Naraki, a, a resident of hell. Uh, his, his passport and visa has been made for, uh, for hell, and he's on the way there. Uh -huh, yes. So, don't think that this sound is a mundane sound. No. The name of Krishna is Krishna himself, superior to us in all ways. So, Sakritapipari Gitam Sotaya Hilayava. Silla Vyasadev is saying, if someone, Sakrit, only once, Pari Gita, he utters this name. Here the word Pari, the, the prefix Pari, indicates Nishet. 
That means it's limiting. Gita means singing. Here Parigita means maybe he's not singing it perfectly. Maybe he's not pronouncing it perfectly. <coughs> like sometimes the Chinese say, Hale Lama. <laughs> so, someone may not pronounce the mantra perfectly. Oh, Parigita, it may mean that they don't say the whole name of Krishna. Madhusu. Madhusudan. Perhaps they don't say the whole name. So, it's limiting it. He may not say it fully, he may not pronounce it perfectly, but still, Sadhya, if, if the person will chant the name with faith, Hey Layava, if even he does not have any faith. <laughs> Amazing. Bhagavanara Matram Tariat Krishna Nama, any human being who utters the name with or without faith, he will be liberated from this world. That means, uh, what is the essence of this? Vastu Shakti. Understand. Vastu Shakti Nahi Bodhir Bodhim Apekshate. Vastu Shakti means the power which is inherent in a thing. So Vastu Shakti is never dependent on your intelligence. Like, just like fire, if you know fire burns, it will burn you. If you don't know that it burns, it will still burn you. The, the Shakti, the power of fire, is its Vastu Shakti, its own inherent potency. It does not depend on what you think. So in the same way, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, power, inconceivable, unlimited power, whether you know it or not. Hmm? You see? I know. Hmm? Everyone. Hmm? What happened? One day you were wandering around, <laughs> here and there, looking here and there. Then you saw some people. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. It's, uh, what is this? Yes. And now you are sitting here with the tea like a country. <laughs> you never knew what was going to happen. But anyway, it happened. Why? Bhagavaranaramata Tare Krishnanama. This name has its own Vastu Shakti, does not depend on your intelligence, your understanding or anything like a fire, it acts. Today or tomorrow or after a little time, it will wake up your soul and you will be delivered from this world. So, King Uta, that means how much more if a person with the uh, <laughs> strong faith Oh, Namparu, you are Krishna himself. I am your servant. And weeping, please accept me. Then, how much power the name will manifest? Because Namprabhu is a person. So, he'll act, whether you know it or not. But if you approach him with love, then he'll become more and more merciful and, cl and inclined. So, Now, let's see. Uh, text 21, Srila is quoting from the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Just one line, and it's very important. Savidya tanmateriyaya. Savidya tanmateriyaya. Savidya. That is knowledge. What is knowledge? Tanmatiryaya. By which one becomes tanmoy. That means absorbed in the non-dual reality, see Krishna. So don't ever think that knowledge is the accumulation of pieces of information. Hmm? People think I have to go to college and fill my head with so many pieces of information. 
And when I've got a huge pile of information and a piece of paper, PhD, uh, now I have knowledge. And after that, receiving my, cer my certificate, I'll go and have a cigarette and watch TV. No, you are, you are Tanmoy, absorbed in Maya. So being absorbed in Maya is not knowledge. Knowledge is only by which you become absorbed in Krishna. And therefore, that person, uh, you see, this is, Srila Bhaktanur Thakur is quoting this to prove Vidya Vadu Jivanam. Sankirtan is the life and soul of knowledge. If you know that every day you should wake up and have a kirtan, then you have the best knowledge. Because that's how you become tanmoy. You are no longer absorbed in the external material world and you are absorbed in transcendence. So that is knowledge. Savidya tanmatiryaya. Now, I'm going to, uh, to skip a few and come to a very important verse from the Rig Veda. It's verse 28, if you have a Bhajan Rasya. Uh, Om Asya Jananto Nama Chitva Bhaktam Haste Vishnu Sumatim Bajamahe Om Tat Sat The Rishis are praying in the Rig Veda. Vishnu, O Vishnu, Supreme Lord. Om Asya Jananto. We here, Asya means of you. And A is added to that. Asya means a little. Jananto. We are persons who know you a little. In other words, the Rishis are saying, we have not realized God, but we have heard from our Gurus, the Vedic mantras, so we know something, that your name is Vishnu, that you are the creator of the world, and so we know something about you. So, um, Om Asya Jananto. But, how wonderful, Nama Chitvavaktam, means by repeating your name that is in the commentary Shri Jiva Goswami part says Aksha Abhyas Aksha Abhyas Abhyas means repetition and Aksha means syllables it's very specific Namachit Vivakta by the repetition of the syllables of your name then Sumatim Bajamahe. Sumatim Bajamahe means Bajamahe means Prapnumaha. We will attain Sumati. Beautiful consciousness. That means a full realization of you just by the repetition of the akshara, the syllables. Hmm? Why? Om Tat Sat. Om is a name, the name of Krishna. Om. A means Krishna. Akshara Yujite Krishna. Savalokai Kanayaka. U means Radhika. Urja, Eshri, Urja Shri Shakti. And uh, mm, Makshare Jiva Vajaka. This the letter, the mm, nasalization. Om. That is the jiva, the soul. So the loving relationship between Radha Krishna and the soul is there in Om. And uh, when Om is fully expanded and becomes full of Ras, it becomes Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. So, understand, Om is the beach, the seed of the Vedas. The Vedas grow, Nikama Vali Satvalam Chitsarupam, and then the fruit full of juice, full of ras comes, and that's the holy name of Krishna. You see? So, uh, Om is the beach. From Om comes the Brahma Gayatri, 
is Veda Mata, the mother of the Vedas. Then from that comes all the Vedas. And then the fruit, the juicy fruit, full of rasa on the tree of the Vedas is Krishna. So, Om here rep means the holy name. Tat, that absolute truth, Sat. Here, Sat means Swatahasiddha, self-manifest, self-existent. Because of the self-manifest, self-existent, indivisible nature of the name, simply by the repetition of the syllables, transcendental knowledge and realization it manifests. The, the, the Holy Name reveals Himself by serving Him through the repetition of the syllables. It's really, really important. Because by our material mind we think, Hare Krishna, Hare, and I've got to do something. There's something on top of this. There's something extra I have to do more than this. Yes, there is. Stop spacing out. Stop being inattentive and thinking of other things. Just absorb your mind fully in the vibration of this name, the syllables. Because simply by the repetition of the syllables. You see, being in this material world, being conditioned for many, many lifetimes, we have a very deeply rooted aversion to God. We have very deeply rooted aversion to God. And because of that deeply rooted vimukata, the indifference, aversion to God, the human being is an expert at being religious without thinking of God. <laughs> he can do everything, bow down, pray, sing, build a church, whatever. He can do so many things, but with the mind not fixed on God at all. So we can also chant and be inattentive. So, but when we try to become completely absorbed in the syllables of the name, these syllables of the name themselves are Krishna, then the power of the name removes our inattentiveness, removes our aversion from Krishna. So Om Tat Sat, the holy name, reveals himself by his own power, his own Vastu Shakti. This is very important to understand. Now, Sila Bhaktinot Thakur, he'll give some verses on how to get attain Mantra City. This is all very practical today. Especially some devotees have received Harinam today. So, and Sila Bhaktinath Thakur is uh, speaking through Bhajan Rahasan. Exactly on the right topic. So in, I've come to text 33 now. Text 33. Sila Bhaktinath Thakur is quoting a verse from Hari Bhakti Vilas. Manahasam Haranam Socham Mona mantra tachintanam avyagratvam anirvedo japasampati hitava. These are the causes of success in japa. So, first, manasamharanam. You should be one pointed. The mind should be withdrawn from all other things and one-pointed. Mano maddeistito mantro mantra maddeistitam manaha mantro mano mantram samayuktam etadhi japalakshanam Also in Hari Bhakti Vilas it is said you should put your mind put the mantra in your mind and put your mind in the mantra and mix the two together completely so they are totally united that means there's no difference between your mind and the mantra. You don't know anything else. You can think about that. If you have a box and a smaller one, you put the small one in the big one, then how do you put the big one in the small one? You can't do it. But anyway, with your mind and the mantra, there's no problem. You can try it now. Put the mantra in your mind. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Rama
your mind inside the mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama. Now nothing should exist, only the mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You just stay there, in that position, for if you can do three, four hours, five hours every day. Then the mantra will reveal itself. But what do we do? We put the mind in the mantra, the mantra in the mind, and then the mind in the dog, the car, the TV, the mother-in-law, whatever. Mind is going around. So, first thing, manasam haranam. First of all, be one-pointed. There should be nothing, just the holy name in your consciousness. And be patient, stay there. If you put some dough in the oven, and then after two minutes you open it and you take it out, nothing, you have to leave it in the oven, it will rise and become very delicious. So in the same way, put yourself in the fire of Harinam and stay there. And all your material ignorance, everything will be burnt away. A very beautiful spiritual form will manifest. The Krishna's form and afterwards your own form. So mana samharanam. Then socha. Socha means cleanliness. We have to live a pure life. So cleanliness is two, outer and inner. One should avoid all the uh, activities of Kali Yuga, intoxication, Meat eating, gambling, illicit sex, all of these things are impure. They cause a destabilization of the consciousness. So be pure outwardly, don't do those things out and don't do them inwardly also. So inwardly and outwardly remain aloof from the contamination of the, of the world. So jump, Mona. Mona means uh, silence. Now, of course, when you chant, you can chant loudly. But here, moan means don't speak about any mundane things. Sometimes they want to, then they talk to someone and then they talk to someone else like this. Very casual. Uh, there's uh, not a respect that the name is Krishna. Uh, what would happen? We are sitting here. If the uh, president of Russia walks through the door now, then everyone would look around and give some attention. Probably here no one would. But in the, in the ordinary world, they just say sit down and listen to the Harikata. But in the ordinary world, if some powerful famous person comes, a king, uh, then everyone gives attention. They don't do other things. So when the only name is that, that is Krishna. Don't do other things. Give full attention to Krishna. Don't speak about other things. So that is called monam. Then, mantra chintanam. Mantra Tachintanam means you can think about the meaning of the mantra. In other words, you are hearing the name, but it's the name of whom? Krishna is the son of Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. He's a coward boy in Vrindavan. So this is the meaning of his of his name. Yashoda Nanda, Shama Sundar. He is very attractive, like a shining fresh rain cloud illuminated by a flash of lightning. So he is Shama Sundar and he is Shodananda. Then Avyagratvam. Vyagratva means impatience. You know when you are restless and you cannot sit still? You sit down to meditate, but your body wants to do something else. Hmm? This is Vyagrata. So, a Vyagrata. Don't be restless. When it's you put aside some hours every day, you sit down. This is your time with Nam Prabhu. Hmm? That's it. So, don't be restless. When you're chanting, you're chanting, you're not doing anything else, and you dedicate a fixed amount of time. And then chant being uh, very patient. Don't think, oh, Gurudev said I have to do so many rounds. 
So if I turn, I can really finish them fast and do something else. No, don't be in a hurry. Really, patiently, peaceful, just think. I am Kaladit, the soul, my soul is eternal. I have eternity. There's no, no need to uh, be distracted. Other things can wait. Even I don't have to do other things. If a, a person is taking shelter of Sri Krishna, all the other things will happen automatically by themselves. Krishna said, Ananyas chintayantamam ye jana pariya pasate tesham nityabhi yuktanam yoga kseima vahamyam If someone is always thinking of me and serving me with love, then whatever he needs, I personally bring it myself. And whatever he has, I protect that also. So, my Gurudev used to say, don't be worried about anything. Lord Brahma has created the entire universe with the Abbas of the beach of Kam Gayatri, with one syllable of the mantra. Lord Brahma created the whole universe and you have all the syllables. So what are you worried about? Whatever you need will come. And many things you think you need, you don't need actually. So if they're not coming, it's not a problem. My Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj, one day he was sitting chanting, and his very dear god brother from far away arrived there with some devotees. And at that time the mat was very poor, they had no money. But Param Gurudev was thinking, oh, now my dear god brother has come, I want to give him something nice, prasada. And then he was chanting and he heard a sound. Chink! And he looked and a bird was flying overhead and dropped one cloth packet and it landed in front of him. And then he opened it and there were some rupees inside. So then he gave it to one, one of his disciples said, Oh, go to the market and get some very first class sweets. And then he offered them to Krishna and with love gave to his god brother. Uh -huh. So Param Gurudev, he used to cry and remember. Oh, Krishna always takes care of whatever his devotee needs. So don't be impatient thinking that you have lots of other things to do. You don't have lots of other things to do. You have one thing to do. Chant Hare Krishna. And there's some, you can do some, you must do some service to Gurudev. Otherwise the power to go deeply in bhajan will not come. So Guru's service is there. But Guru will not be happy if you're only serving but not chanting Japa every day. Uh, you must chant Japa nicely. If there's a very, if there's a big festival when there's so much pressure on you and you have to do so many things and Gurudev has come at that time, then you may do a lot of service and you may not be able to complete your rounds. It's a very special, extraordinary circumstances. You can do it, you can catch up later. But in ordinary circumstances, try to complete your rounds every day and also the rest of the time engage in service. So that is, we have discussed uh, Vyagra Thvam. Then, Anirvedo. Anirved. Nirved is a problem that we see a lot of devotees have. Nirved means to be uh, discouraged, to be disappointed and become depressed. I've been chanting for so long, but I didn't realize I am not making any progress. So Anirved means the opposite of that. Always joyful, enthusiastic, optimistic, <laughs> And even if you chant it for a long time, but still the result is not coming. Your faith, your confidence in the name does not deplete in any way. And if you have these uh, symptoms, six, mana samharanam, solcham, mauna mantra tachintanam, avyagratvama nirvedo, then japa sampati hetava, then your japa will become completely successful, without a doubt. Because the holy name is an infallible medicine. If you are sick 
and the doctor gives you a medicine, it may not work, and you may not be cured. But the holy name is infallible medicine. It works every time. But you have to observe the six, uh, six attitudes which are expressed here in this verse. That's Vajana text 33. So, in the commentary, Sila Gurudev is giving some uh, a very nice explanation. In regard to Nam Arta Chintanam, remembering, <coughs> contemplating the meaning of the name, there are three things. The meaning of the name itself, like Krishna. Narad Vinod Jivana Sudurumi Niryasi Maduri Pura Tom Krishna Nama Kamas Purune Rasane Rasena Sada Rupa Goswami Pad said Oh Krishna Nam You give life to the Vina of Narad Muni You know Narad Muni? Hmm? Plays his Vina? Actually he doesn't play He just sings Kirtan And the Vina comes alive and plays itself <laughs> This is the meaning, Narad Vinod's Jivana. That when Narad Muni begins to sing, Narad Muni Bajai Bino Radhikuramana Name Narad Muni sings the name of Radharaman and the name infuses the Vina. His Vina comes to life and starts to play. So, the uh, implication here is I cannot chant this name. Don't have the ego that you can chant. <laughs> Only just as the Supreme Lord from the transcendental world descends and appears in this world by his sweet will, Nam Prabhu is also an avatar. Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar. The avatar of Krishna in this age of Kali is Krishna Nam. So, we begin to chant. But when we begin to chant, it may be that our chanting is not pure, some offenses there, or Nam Abbas. But the Shuddha Nam, the pure name, you cannot chant. Nam Prabhu appears. So, in this verse, Rupa Goswami is saying, hmm, Rasane, O Nam Prabhu, you please appear on my tongue by your own free will. And as you made the Vina of Narmuni come alive and sing, you make me come alive and sing your glories. So be aware of that. Don't have the ego that you can chant. Like we said yesterday, when that Prakashananda Sarasvati Thakur said to Mahaprabhu, why are you singing and dancing? I don't sing and dance. My Guru gave me this mantra and this mantra is making me dance. It is making me sing. So we are not the doers. Once my Gurudev was in Australia and some reporter came and said to him, So, you have so many disciples all over the world. This must be a very great responsibility, heavy responsibility for you to carry. Gurudev said, No, not at all. I have no stress at all. The report said, why? Gurudev said, because I am not doing anything. <laughs> he said, behind the curtain of Maya, behind that curtain, there is Gornitai. <laughs> and they are doing the eternal kirtan and distributing praying. Hmm? I am not doing anything. Gornitai are doing everything. So pure devotee has that vision. He thinks, I am not qualified. I am not a pandit. I am not a scholar. I don't have any attributes or anything. But 
I believe in the lotus feet of my Guru. And I repeat his words. And by Kripa, by mercy, everything is going on automatically. So, Narad Vidnoj Jivana Madur Sudurmi Niryas Madura Pura Tom Krishna Nama Kamas Purane Rasain Rasane Rasaina Sada. O Nam Prabhu, you appear on my tongue along with Rasa. May bring me alive. And you are Sudurmi Niryasa Madhuri Pura. Actually this verse is also quoted in Bhajan Rahasa. It means, O Nam, you are like the crest of a wave in an ocean of sweetness. Krishna. It sounds like a wave. Krishna. So the name of Krishna is like a wave in the ocean of sweetness. So one should remember the meaning of the names of Krishna. This is one aspect of Mantra Chintan. Another aspect is remember the predominating deity of the mantra and one's relationship. In other words, when a person calls Krishna, they have different intention. When Mother Yashoda calls Krishna, she's thinking, oh, maybe he's hungry. He's looking a little bit skinny. See, because if a person falls in love, they lose their appetite. So because Krishna has fallen in love with Radharani, he's not eating so much. So his mother is very worried about him. Why is he not eating so much? So Krishna, with this relation, like a mother. The friends are calling, Krishna, let's fight. Hmm? Let's climb trees. Let's swim in the river. And the gopis call Krishna. Yeah. With their various various moods. Krishna, that means Mas Prisha, don't touch me. <laughs> I am very chaste and dharmic. <laughs> and you are a thief. Huh? Krishna. <laughs> so when someone says a name, then there's an intention as well. So there are three things in Mantra to Chintan. The meaning of the name, remember the deity, who it is, and the, what is your relation. And call in, the, in according to one's relation. Then the next thing is Nyas. Nyas means that the deity of this mantra is my protector. And I am placing myself in His presence. Nyas means to place. You know, if there's a deity installation, it's called Pran Pratishta. So, that means the deity is stone. People think like this. The deity is stone, but you do this ceremony and you pran, you put the Pran, that means Krishna's life, Pratishta, is established and now the deity is Krishna and it's alive. Yeah. So, this is not the meaning of Pran Pratishta. Pran Pratishta means you put your Pran, Pratishta, you establish your Pran at the feet of Krishna. So Krishna is already everywhere. Yeah. Where will you call him to come from? He's already here. <laughs> so, in the same way here, Nyas means to place. Sometimes people are putting on tilak and they're touching and they say the names of the different deities and, and they're installing the deities in their tilaks and everything. In Aishwarya mood, in Sri Sampradaya and other Sampradayas, in Vaidhi Bhakti sometimes, do, do, we don't do that. Uh, why are we going to install Krishna here and there? Uh, this is just all Aishwarya. So this, this Nyas with Angan Nyas, establishing the deity in the different parts of the body. We, we don't do that. We just touch our tilaks and say, Om Keshavaya Namah Narayana Maravaya Govindaya Namaha, like this. Just touch the tilaks and say the name of Krishna. And as you say each name of Krishna, remember Radharani. <laughs> <coughs> of We chant the name of Krishna, why? Only to please Radha. So, Nyas means 
to place yourself at the feet of your deity. So when you are chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, think, oh, now this name is Krishna is right. And then the next one is called Prapati. That means now Krishna is here. I come, property means I take shelter of you. You are all powerful and I am drowning in this ocean of material existence. You are my only shelter. I take complete shelter of you. Then the next mood is Sharnagati. Sharnagati means surrender and that includes accepting everything which is favorable for your Ishtadev, for your deity. Rejecting what is unfavorable, accepting your deity, Kutsi Krishna, as your maintainer in this life, now, tomorrow, when you're old, next life, whenever. Krishna will always maintain me, so I have no worries. Krishna is my protector in the time of danger. To always be very, very humble and to have no interest. Atmanivedha, no interest outside of the interest of the Lord. And then, so these are the aspects of surrender. And then by doing this, your swarup, your spiritual identity will appear. And then there's the Atmanivedha of surrendering to Krishna in one spiritual form. Before, surrendering means my body, mind and words because it's all I know. But when we realize our soul, then we give our soul to see Krishna. So, just to summarize, in order to get Mantra Siddhi, first from Hari Bhakti Vilas, Manha Samharanam Socham Mona Mantra Chintanam Abhagrata Manirvedo Java Sampati Eitava. The mind should be fixed, one pointed, one should be clean internally and externally, one should not talk about other things, observe silence other than chanting of a mantra, and one should remember the meaning of the mantra. One should be patient, not restless, and one should be optimistic and enthusiastic, not become discouraged or uh, uh, depressed in any way, or pessimistic. And then, after that, we discussed the meaning of mantra ta chintan, means to remember the meaning of the words of the mantra, the deity of the mantra, and your relationship. Nyas, to place yourself in the presence of the deity of the mantra, Prapati, to take full shelter, and Sharnagati, all the aspects of surrender, and then Atmanivedan, in one spiritual form, one can give one's entire existence, thinking, ah, I belong to Sri Krishna. Nothing belongs to me. Even my soul does not belong to me. My soul belongs to Krishna. And so, following this, one can get Mantra Siddhi, realization, of the holy name and perfection in chanting Hare Krishna and also uh, this also applies to the remembrance of the Diksha Mantras, Gopal Mantra, Kam Gayatri and so on also. So, now we're coming to the second cha uh, chapter. It, it is based on the verse Second verse of Shikshastaka. Nam nam akari bahudani jasarva shaktis tatra pitani amatas marane nakala eta dvishita vakripa bhagavam mamapi durudaivi madrishami hajani nanuraga. Hey Bhagavan, O Supreme Lord, nam nam akari bahudani jasarva shaktis. You have. Put Sarva Shakti, all your potencies, in your holy name. So there is no difference between you and your name. In your name, your holy dham, all your associates, your beauty, your sweetness, your mercy, everything is there. Tatra Pitani Avatas Kala. There is no fixed rule and regulation. In regard to Kal, time, this means that. If you have a Diksha Mantra, you have to chant it at a fixed time in the three Sandhyas. In the Sandhya, the junction between the, the night and the morning. So that's 48 minutes before sunrise, 
until the sun is as half risen. So that's the morning sandhya. And then noon and then in the evening, between when the one sun sets and the stars appear. So in these three sandhyas, the devotees have to remember their Diksha mantras, Gayatri mantras. It's fixed. You have to have tilak. You have to do achaman first, sit on the asan, facing east. All of There are rules and regulations of time and place, cleanliness and so on. But Mahaprabhu is saying, Niyamatas Marne Nakala, in the chanting of Harinam, the Maha Mantra, there are no rules in, in this regard. Any time, every time, all the time. Once, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was staying in Puri, there was a little boy. Who, were, who became very close to Mahaprabhu. His name was Gopal. And one day, Mahaprabhu took his water pot and he was holding his tongue. And he was going to mm, use the bathroom. So the little boy said, Oh Mahaprabhu, why are you holding your tongue? Mahaprabhu said, Because it won't stop chanting. <laughs> it's by itself. But now I'm going to use the toilet so I don't want to utter the pure mantra in the toilet huh? the little boy said oh but the Hare Krishna Maha mantra is completely pure and transcendental you can chant anytime there's no question of contamination with this mantra then Mahaprabhu he let go of his tongue okay Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna. <laughs> and he said to the boy yes you are right today you have come become my guru and from that day, that boy, he was known as Gopal Guru. And when he grew up, he became the great Gopal Guru Goswami. You can read about his life and teachings in Jaiva Dharma. So, of course, Mahaprabhu knows everything, but he has made this sweet pastime to make an impression on us and give some glory to his devotee Gopal Guru Goswami. So there is no... Uh, Obstacle. There's no rule or regulation in regard to time. So, but my Lord, even though you are so merciful, Durdaiva, due to misfortune, I don't feel any eagerness for chanting. So this verse is very, very deep. Try to catch the essence of this verse. Here the word anurag doesn't mean the very high stage of brain. It means only utkanta, eagerness. If you want something, you feel you'll die without something. You're on the verge of death. Your pran pushes your soul up and the soul leaves. For the pious person, they may leave through the mouth. So the pran pushes the soul up and they're about to die, that means that the pran has come up to the throat. Utkanta. So the word eagerness in Sanskrit means utkanta. That uh, right now I need this right now. Otherwise, in the next moment I'll die. Utkanta. So Mahapu is saying, Durdaivam, due to my bad fortune. Here Durdaivam, bad fortune means offenses. Because... I have committed offenses to the Holy Name. Therefore, when I chant, I am not feeling the eagerness, that desperation. So, the essence here, there, there are a few points. First of all, the verse itself is teaching us that the entrance into bhakti begins with anutap, regret. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is expressing regret. Alas, alas, I am offensive and this is why I am not feeling eagerness. So when you sit down to chant, you have to feel the anutap. Oh my Lord, I wasted my life. I have no taste for chanting. I committed many offenses. And this is the sign that the mercy of the Lord is coming. Kripa nimeton utapaha, Sri Swami said, that when the devotee feels genuine repentance 
and regret, it's because the mercy of the Lord is the cause of that. So if we don't have that anutak, that regret, when we begin to chant, then it can be understood that the mercy of the Lord is not acting in our life yet. But when His mercy comes, then surely, you can if you don't have this book try to get this it's very nice just one verse and uh, it just shows how to make some adjustment when you begin to chant what adjustments are necessary to really follow the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Shikshastaka very um, so, it's here, you can get it from uh, Brenda Dasi. First aid for chanting. <laughs> so, Mapu is expressing this. The entrance into Nam Bhajan, the mood of regret. Another thing he's expressing here. That because of my offenses, I am not feeling the intense anxiety. That means that if a person will chant the name of Krishna not committing any of the ten Nam Aparads that just by the touch of that Nam Abbas the eagerness will come just like if you rub sticks together fire will come out so when this name touches the heart then the fire of separation begins to manifest Utkanta so Nija Shakti Utkantena Another point which is here in this verse is Vastu Shakti, we spoke about, how fire has its own potency. So here Mahaprabhu is describing that the holy name has Vastu Shakti, Nija Sarva Shaktish, all its own potency. And if it will, the holy name will touch us and we chant without offense, then the fire of feelings of separation will come. Kamora Pranunato Mapu was crying. Oh, where is my Lord of my Pran who is playing on a flute? Where can I go and what can I do to meet the son of Nanda Maharaj? To whom can I speak and who will understand the extent of my disappointment? Without the son of Nanda Maharaj, my heart is breaking. So that is anurag. Intense feelings of eagerness and separation. And they're awakened just by the touch of the name. If a person does not commit the offenses to the holy name, it's amazing. You may think, oh, I don't really feel a relation with Krishna. Just try to chant every day. Hmm? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, of all the practices of bhakti, the chanting of the holy name is the best of all. And if you chant, just not making offense to the name, not being inattentive, then Pai Prema does this love will awaken in the heart naturally. Such a great miracle. Now, another teaching in this verse. What are we speaking about here? Because you are looking and seeing the words Nam, Nam, Akari. Where is Vastu Shakti? Where is Anuta? What is Nam, uh, this, this, this is poetry. So, in poetry, Kavya, the meaning is not in the words, but in the suggestion. That is called in Sanskrit Dhwani. Dhwani. It's in the suggestion. So all of these things, Vastu Shakti, avoiding Nama Parat, Anutap, regret, the um, awakening of Utkanta by the touch of the name, all of these things are there very clearly for one who can feel the Dhwani in his heart, the suggestion. So, Another thing here is this second verse of Shikshastakam 
refers to the stage in Bhakti, Sadhu Sangha. Because without Sadhu Sangha, we never get to understand what are the twenties, what are the implications of the poetry of Shikshastaka or Srimad Bhagavatam. They reveal, by Sadhu Sangha, we become exposed to the mood of the verse, not in an intellectual way, actually. Just like my Parampurupa Pujapadzila Bhaktivigyan Bharati Maharaj. Once he was explaining that it's important to do parakrama, visit the holy places in Sadhu Sangha, in the association of pure devotees. Why? Because in Chaitanya Charamrita, in Srimad Bhagavatam, so much is written about love in separation from Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavatam, you can read Brahmar Gita. How Radhika, in the madness of separation from Krishna when he went to Mathura, is quarreling with a bumblebee. No bumblebee, I will not make a peace with Krishna. You have come here to negotiate on his behalf, but I will not make a peace with him because we know his character. We left everything for him and then he gave us up and left us. So I don't want to have anything to do with this black person. He is black on the outside and black on the inside also. The bumblebee said, if you don't want to have anything to do with him, why you talk about him all the time? Then Radhika told the bumblebee, yes, this is my problem. <laughs> I can give up Krishna, but I cannot give up Krishna Katha. I can give up Krishna, but I cannot give up talking about it. <laughs> what does that mean? Huh? means you cannot give up Krishna. <laughs> but female nature is like that. <laughs> I hate you. No? It means I love you. So, <laughs> so Radharani is speaking to the bumblebee like this. Very, very beautiful. But if we read it, we don't feel it. But when there's a pure Vaishnava, then the fire of separation is burning in his heart. And if we come near and listen, then we feel the heat of that separation. Just like if you are cold, you are very cold. So then you think, oh, I'm going to uh, let me read a book about a very warm sweater <laughs> and the campfire but you'll still be freezing huh? because only reading about the warm clothing or reading about the fire will not make you warm only actually being by a real fire will you will feel the heat so in the same way one may read about the separation of Radhika or the separation of Mahaprabhu in the mood of Radharani. But you cannot feel it. But when we are in Vaishnava association, then the heat of separation is in their heart. And by listening, then some of that heat of separation begins to warm our heart. And our heart starts to melt also. And the feeling of strong relationship with Krishna is manifest. So that is also the Dwani of this second verse of Shikshastaka. That we were living our life, <coughs> we were chanting something, but we didn't know how to chant properly or anything. But by association with the sadhu, then the feeling comes. In what mood to take shelter of Krishna's name? That Krishna Nam Prabhu will reciprocate with us. So that is the some of the dwani, the, the implications the moods in the second verse of Shikshastaka. And if a person will chant following this verse, what will happen? First verse was Shraddha, now the second verse, Sadhu Sangha, Vajana Kriya, you practice, 
an art and liberty. All the obstacles, internal obstacles will be removed. So in the evening class, oh, today is the appearance day of Srila Vrindam Das Thakur. So in the evening, first we'll see a drama, and then I'll speak something, an uh, offering in the glorification of Srila Vrindam Das Thakur, and then we'll discuss how chanting in this mood removes all the obstacles, anatta nivriti, and we come to the stage of nishta. Ikagrata chitta, one-pointed chitta, and then from that stage, the mirror of our heart is clear enough to begin to catch the slight reflection at first of the beautiful form of Krishna, and then it will become more and more clean until full realization comes. Gaur Premanande! Try to take all these jewels in your pockets, very valuable jewels, and follow it in your life if you want to be happy forever.